the Dread Pirate Nash is back again for a more difficult problem. He's found another trove of gold coins, and it's up to him to divide those coins among his crew of seven other pirates. Sticking to pirate tradition, the rules of division are as follows. The captain begins by proposing a division of the coins. If at least half of the pirates, including the captain, accept that division, the proposal is implemented. If not, the captain walks the plank, and the next in line among the crew repeats this process. That is, the second pirate will then propose a division of the gold coins. It will go up to a vote. If at least half accept, then that proposal is implemented. And if not, that crew member will walk the plank, and the next crew member in line will take over, and we'll repeat this until we have an agreement made. And these are our traditional pirates, which means they are strategic and rational. And they are also life-preserving, then greedy, and then career-oriented. That means they prefer being alive to dead, and conditional on being alive, they prefer more coins to fewer, and conditional on being alive and having the same number of coins, they prefer a higher rank to a lower rank. Here's the part that makes this puzzle more difficult than the traditional pirate problem. Your puzzle for today is to figure out what the fewest number of coins is necessary for the captain to survive. Of course, that implies that the first proposal that the Dread Pirate Nash makes is accepted by the crew. Can he get that done with 100 gold coins? Or if maybe there's only 10 gold coins? Or if there's five, or three, or two, or one, or maybe even zero. That's the puzzle for today. And while you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is to use backward induction, which is a subject covered within Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. The trick here, though, is that the number of gold coins is not fixed. So you may have to do some guessing and checking to see what the lowest number is you can get down to and still have the Dread Pirate Nash survive. Are you ready for the answer? If you've never seen the pirate problem before, you may initially suspect that the Dread Pirate Nash's survival depends on having an absolute trove of gold coins. That is, to buy the compliance of his crew, he will need to have lots of money to distribute, otherwise he is going to be stuck walking the plank. But once you start applying the principle of backward induction, that is, starting at the end of the problem and working your way backward, you quickly realize that the situation for the Dread Pirate Nash isn't nearly as hopeless as it might have seemed. Let's imagine that we get into a world where we're down to just that final pirate. And for convenience, we'll label him pirate number eight. Since there are no other pirates around, he'll be able to keep whatever number of gold coins there are. That's a pretty good outcome for that last pirate. The key value in backward induction is that we can use that piece of information to inform what will happen in the previous step. So imagine we're down to just the last two pirates pirate number 7, and pirate number 8. For pirate 7 to survive, he simply needs one vote. And because he doesn't want to walk the plank himself, he will be voting on whatever proposal he makes. Thus, he can propose all of the coins for himself and still survive. As a result, if we get down to just the last two pirates, this is the outcome that we expect to happen. Now let's take that information and use it to inform what Pirate 6 should do. With three pirates left, we need to have two affirmative votes to make sure that Pirate 6 survives. What's the cheapest way Pirate 6 can buy one other vote? Obviously he has his own, he just needs to buy off either 7 or 8. Well remember that if it gets down to just the last two pirates, Pirate 8 will receive no gold coins whatsoever. As a consequence, pirate number 6 can buy pirate number 8's compliance with just a single gold piece. And as a consequence, 
Pirate 6 can keep the remaining gold pieces for himself. This proposal is sufficient to pass, and Pirate 6 cannot get any more gold than by doing this. As a consequence, this is what we expect to happen if we get down to the final three pirates. Pirate number 5 still needs to buy the compliance of two pirates. He has himself, which means he only needs to buy one other vote. If you think about what happens if you get down to just the final three pirates, then pirate number seven will receive no gold pieces whatsoever. Pirate seven doesn't like that, and as a consequence, pirate five can buy his compliance for just a single gold coin. That leaves the remaining gold coins for pirate five, and as a consequence, this is the proposal that we expect to be implemented if we get down to the final four pirates. What happens when pirate number four is the proposer? Well, as we just saw, if this proposal fails, pirates 6 and 8 receive no gold coins. Here, pirate number 4 needs to have 3 votes in total to survive. He has his own, and as a consequence of what we just saw, he can buy pirates number 6 and number 8 for just a single gold coin. He can keep the rest of the coins for himself, and still manage to have this proposal pass. And as a consequence... This is what we expect to happen if we are down to just five pirates. What happens when Pirate 3 is the proposer? Well, as we just saw, if this proposal fails, Pirates 5 and 7 receive no gold coins. Pirate 3 needs three votes in total to survive. He has his own, and he can buy off 5 and 7 for one gold coin apiece. That allows him to keep the remaining gold pieces for himself and still manage to survive this vote. What if pirate number two is the proposer? Now that we have seven total pirates, we need four affirmative votes for this proposal to pass. And as we just saw, if this proposal fails, pirates four, six, and eight receive no gold pieces. As a consequence, Pirate number two can buy their compliance for one gold piece each, and keep the remaining gold coins for himself. As such, this is the proposal that will be implemented, and if we get down to pirate number two being the proposer, this is the expected number of gold pieces that each player will receive. Now we can address what the Dread Pirate Nash should do with the initial proposal in the game. From what we just saw, if this proposal fails, pirates 3, 5, and 7 receive no gold pieces. As a consequence, they are the cheapest individuals to buy off, and the Dread Pirate Nash can do that for one gold piece each, and thereby keep the remaining gold pieces for himself. Consequently, and contrary to earlier intuition, the Dread Pirate Nash does not need to have a ton of gold coins to survive. In fact, as we've seen here, three gold coins is good enough to keep him alive. He may not get to keep any gold for himself, but at least he won't have to walk the plank. If you have had some experience with the pirate problem before, you may have guessed that the correct answer was three. But what if I told you that three is actually not the right answer? And we can get it down even further. What if I told you that the Dread Pirate Nash could survive without any gold coins whatsoever? Let's examine why that's the case. Clearly, Pirate 8 survives if he's by himself, because he's not going to vote himself to walk the plank. With Pirate number 7 around, Pirate 7 also survives, despite not being able to buy off Pirate 8. Again, it's because Pirate 7 only needs to have one vote for this proposal to pass, and he is certainly not going to be voting himself to walk the plank. Things get dicey when we get to Pirate 6. Pirate 6 has no gold coins to buy off either 7 or 8. And that's a big problem. 7 and 8 know that if they vote to vote off 6, that both of them will ultimately survive, and they will have a higher rank as a consequence of 6 walking the plank. Thus, there is nothing 6 can do to survive here. 6 is doomed. This leads to a complicated set of incentives when we get to Pirate 5. Pirate 5 still does not have any gold coins to share with the other pirates. And yet nevertheless, 
he can manage to survive this one. Seven and eight clearly don't want to have five survive. If this proposal fails, six will also walk the plank, and seven and eight will be remaining as the final two crew members, and they really do like that higher rank. However, five wants to survive, and six knows that if this proposal fails, he's going to walk the plank. As a consequence, the coalition of pirates five and six carry this vote and ensure that pirate five survives. This leads to some perverse incentives when we get back to pirate four. Five, six, seven, and eight know that if this proposal fails, all of them will ultimately survive. As a consequence, there is no reason to keep Pirate 4 around, and Pirate 4 has no gold coins at his disposal to change any of those incentives. So he's a goner. Pirate 3 is in that same boat. 5, 6, 7, and 8 know that if this proposal fails, so too will the next one, and all of them will receive quite a big promotion. Even though 3 and 4 really want to assure their survival by voting affirmatively on this proposal, that's still not enough to carry the vote. They are outvoted 4 to 2, and Pirate 3 would walk the plank under this circumstance. The trouble continues for Pirate 2. The coalition of Pirates 5, 6, 7, and 8 want to vote off 2, because if they do that, three and four will ultimately walk the plank as well, leading to a good promotion for all of them. The coalition of two, three, and four would like this one to pass instead so that they can assure their survival, but a coalition of three is not good enough when there's a coalition of four willing to vote them off. As a consequence, two is doomed. But adding Nash to the mix solves this problem. Pirates 2, 3, and 4 know that their survival depends on this proposal passing. As a consequence, the Dread Pirate Nash has the coalition of four pirates that he needs to survive, even though he has no gold coins to share. It's still true that Pirates 5, 6, 7, and 8 want to vote against this proposal, so that they will ultimately receive a really nice promotion. Unfortunately for them, those four votes are not sufficient to sink the initiative. And as such, the Dread Pirate Nash survives despite not having any gold coins to share. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Take care.